Hey everybody, welcome to my second of two videos on the Mamiya Secord 1000 TL. In this video, we're going to look at how to operate this camera. So, we're going to look at lenses, batteries, and all the different functions that you need to be able to use to look to use this camera. The last thing we're going to do is take a look through the viewfinder and I will show you how to use the camera's meter. First thing we're going to do is mount and unmount the lens has a standard M42 mount that just screws in to the lens mount there. That's it, lens is mounted. To do the unmounting, simply unscrew it. Lens is unmounted. We're gonna leave it in for right now until we need to take it off later. Next thing we're gonna do here is change the battery. So I've got a Hong Kong dime that we're going to use to unscrew this. That fits really perfectly. Uh, or any other coin will work that will fit in here. There we go. So you can see inside the, um, the battery slot right there, there's a minus sign on the contact. And that's telling you to put the minus side of the battery towards that contact. So this uses an A76 battery. That's actually an LR44, but A70, they have the same voltage, but A76s are better because the voltage is consistent throughout the life and they are not as prone to leaking as LR44s. I'm going to drop the battery cover in place. And it should thread on very easily without any resistance or trouble. If you have any issues threading the battery cover on, you should remove it and try again because you don't want to risk cross-threading the battery cover. There we go, we've loaded the battery. The next thing we need to do is load the film. And the way that we load the film is we pop up the film rewind knob and we drop the film in place. Pull out a leader and we're gonna feed it into the take up spool there. We're gonna use the shutter button to take a picture. Now make sure when you do that, that the shutter is set to a relatively fast speed, but also that your fingers and the film leader are not touching the shutter. I'm going to advance the film. And once more, just to make sure that it's taking up properly. Now at this point, what you wanna do is close the film back. There we go. And we're going to take three exposures to advance the frame counter to the first frame. Now we know that the film that's behind the shutter is fresh film and it's not already been ruined by the light. Film is one and done. So if you pull it out of the cassette and expose it to the light, it's ruined. If uh, if it's exposed to the light outside of the controlled setting of taking a picture, then no image can be had on the film. So after you've gotten to this point, rewind the film knob to take out the tension. You don't want to make the film creak or crack just until you get some resistance. There we go. And then this way, as you take other pictures, you can know that the film's moving through the camera by looking at the knob, which is actually not supposed to do that. This camera is possessed. And afterwards, set your film ISO to the film speed that you're going to be shooting at. There we go. Let's call it 200. Why not? And we're ready to go. Now, I'm going to show you what's happening inside your camera as you take pictures. So remember, once you load your film, don't open the back of the camera until you've taken all the pictures and have completely rewound your film. So every time you take a picture, you'll activate, you'll compose it, meter it, put your settings in place, and then push the shutter button. Then when you advance the film, it just moves through the back of the camera, and then advances fresh film to behind the shutter opening right here, so that a fresh picture can be taken. Just like that. Now. You've gone through your entire roll of film, 24 or 36 frames, and you've taken all of your pictures. Remember, of course, you have to keep your film back closed this whole time. 
To rewind your film, you simply push down on the film rewind button here and then start rewinding. And listen for this sound. That is the sound of the film leader coming off of the film spool and lets you know you're almost done rewinding your film. Now, in real life, you would want to rewind your film leader all the way back inside of the cassette before you take it off to be developed. I'm going to leave it out so that I can use that cassette again in other videos. And that is loading, advancing, and rewinding the film, and you can see what happens inside of it. Remember, of course, from the time you close your film back after loading it to the time you open it to remove the film, having completely rewound it, you cannot open the film back or your images will all be lost. For those of you who like to use flashes with your cameras, this has an export right here on the side, and with that, no hot shoe. So what you have to do is connect your flash through that PC port. It will sync at 1 60th of a second or slower, but not any faster. And the reason for that is because the way the shutter works, faster shutter speeds don't happen because the shutter is constantly moving faster and faster. They happen because this has two shutter curtains. And when the first one opens, the second one trails behind it. So if the first one opens and you're taking a 60th of a second exposure, the entire frame is exposed to light briefly, and then the second curtain closes. And during that time when the entire frame is exposed to light, the flash goes, illuminates the subject, the light comes into the film, and then the curtain closes. So let's say that you're taking a 1 30th of a second exposure. Well, it's open for slightly longer, and then it closes. For a full second exposure, it's open a very long time, and then it closes. But what about a 1 1 25th of a second exposure? It would open, and then your flash would go off if you used a flash right then. So what would happen is your shutter curtains would cause shadows on the image, and you'd only have a partial image on your film where the light could get between the shutter curtains. One one thousandth of a second might only look like that. So the shutter speeds don't increase because the shutter curtains physically move faster, but because the distance between them gets narrower with the fast, faster shutter speeds. So one sixtieth is the fastest shutter speed at which the entire film piece of film is open to the light at one time. So the next thing we're going to do here is look through the camera's viewfinder. There we go. And that's as in focus as I can get the coins, I apologize. So here's what we have in the viewfinder. Over here on the right side, we have the light meter. Here is your spot metering area. In the bottom in the middle, this is where your meter reading is coming from, 100% of it. And other than that, the viewfinder is very clear. So to take a meter reading, what you'll want to do is you, can, you see the, uh, is you want to just push the lever into the camera's body like that. And let's see what happens when I do that. So I'm going to push the camera's lever into the body and you can see that it's moving. What happens is the camera stops down the aperture and then the light coming through the aperture in that little space right there tells the camera what the proper exposure should be. Right now we're overexposed. So let's try, let's try a faster shutter speed and a smaller aperture. There we are, we're very underexposed all of a sudden. Let's see if I can get a correct exposure. There we go. That is what a correct exposure reading looks like. Now remember, 100% of the light meter information comes from this spot that you're looking at in the center of the image of the video right now. So let's talk in practical terms about what that means for your photography and why it is that this camera wasn't a marketable success. Anytime you take a light meter reading, approximately this part, if this was the, the image you were going to take a picture of right now, this area right here would be metered. If you wanted to take a picture of, of this image, 
this area would be metered. This camera's light meter, and the way light meters in general for film cameras work, is they see the world as a uniform 18% gray. In this case, it sees the metered area as an 18% gray. And so this is an 18% gray, or near as makes no difference. This, this tablecloth, or the, the fabric that I use here is 18% gray. So if I were to meter off this, it would be fine. This is black, but the camera thinks that this is 18% gray. So if I metered off of this, then what would happen is everything would be really overexposed. And so spot metering requires an extra step that a lot of people didn't go through or didn't want to go through, and they'd find that the very bottom part of their camera, of their image, would be exposed properly, and then the rest of it would be blown out or very dark or something like that. So let's say that. So let's say that this is an image you want to take a photo of for no good reason whatsoever. What we have here is we have a light area. It's kind of a mid-tone, but lighter. Here's an area that's lighter, a lot of 18% gray, and then a black area. So let's say that you wanted this image to be metered properly with a TL-1000, and the metering area is right here. Fine, no problem. You can just take the meter reading and move on, and you're good to go. Well, what if we change it like this? This area will look gray on the final image. All of this will be basically white you'll have almost no image detail in it whatsoever. Well, okay, so let's switch things up. Here we go. This is pretty reflective. That's about a stop and a half to two stops brighter than the surrounding area. So if you're now metering off of this, what's gonna happen is all of this is going to be extremely dark, especially over here will be pitch black. And this is even whiter. So if you metered off of this, then this would be gray and everything else would be unusably black. So when using a spot meter in the TL, what you have to do is figure out what part of the scene you want to take a picture of is a medium gray. Right here is perfect. So you'd have to meter off of this area, come up with your settings, recompose, and take a picture. And that's a whole lot of added steps if all you really want to do is pick up your camera and take a picture and move on. So now that we've seen how to meter with the camera, I'm going to show you how to do the full process of taking a photo. And what you would want to do is compose your image. This is the image you want to take. Great, it's composed. Let's take this photo. First, you're going to take a meter reading. Okay, it's too dark. So let's open up the aperture a couple of stops. Okay, it's, uh, it's still too dark, but I don't really want to have anything shallower than an f5.6. So, so let's try our luck. Let's get a tripod out and go to a fifteenth of a second. Excellent. Perfect. Now we have a proper meter reading. We're metering it and everything looks good. And we're going to take a picture. That's it. That is the process of taking a picture with this camera. When you're done, you just push this button and the arm folds back into the camera, making sure that it's off, but also so that the arm doesn't get caught on something like your belt loop and break or damage the camera by being forcibly moved when it shouldn't be. This is a pretty neat innovation on these Mamiya's as well. So taking a picture aside from the complexities of the metering is pretty simple. So for those of you who like to take double exposures, this is not the camera to get because it has a double exposure prevention mechanism built into it which makes double exposures impossible. I have tried time and time again to get this to mechanically perform a double, exp uh, the double exposure operations that are supposed to happen with a camera like this, and it won't do it. So if double exposures are something you want to do, this is not a camera for you. So with that, this has been my second of the two videos on the Mamiya TL-1000. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below in the comments section, and I'm more than happy to respond to those as quickly as I can. If you have ideas or suggestions for future videos, please leave those below as well. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up, because that lets me know I'm on the right track and that I'm producing content which is useful to you. If you're an amateur photographer and have photos you've taken with the 1000TL, 
feel free to share a link to those in the video's comments if you would like. And one last thing, thank you guys for watching and take great photos.